we have a, another related rates example. This is about a triangle, which is not necessarily a right triangle, where we have uh, two sides of a triangle are going to be constant. They are known to be 12 and 15. Never read through the whole problem. Draw something as you're reading. So label one side 15, the other side 12. Doesn't matter. Uh, the angle between them, that's going to be increasing. So let's call that a variable, theta. The angle between them is increasing at a rate of two degrees every minute. And that's going to cause the third side to be increasing. And that's what we're trying to measure. How fast is the third side increasing? At a particular instant, a particular snapshot in time, when um, the angle between the sides is exactly uh, 60 degrees. So we're going to label that that third side as x. As theta increases, x, x will increase. Our job: find the x dt. So we need to relate these variables to each other. We have three sides of a triangle, the angle opposite one of the sides. The triangle is not necessarily a right triangle. There's an equation that relates the three sides to the angle that's opposite one of them. That equation is called the law of cosines. What it says is that the, the third side that's opposite the angle squared is equal to the other two sides squared added up minus twice the product of the other two sides times the cosine of this opposite angle okay there's a stated in a standard kind of a geometry class way and our variables will have x squared is equal to 12 squared plus 15 squared you can interchange those uh, minus 2 times 12 times 15 times the cosine of the angle between them and that will relate x to theta. Those are our only changing quantities. The other guys are constant. 15 squared, 225. 12 squared, 144. 225 and 144 add up to be 369. Um, 30 and 12 is 360. So here's our equation. The fact that x squared is equal to 369 minus 300, co uh, sorry, 360 uh, cosine theta relates x to theta. Now we're interested in how this is changing, so we're going to take a derivative of this. But we're interested in a particular snapshot when theta is exactly 60 degrees. And so what we're going to do is, um, in that snapshot, if we have a 15 and a 12 and a pi over 3 or, or 60 degrees, we've got to figure out what x is. And so when we go to figure out what x is, we're going to plug into that equation. The 60 degrees, the pi over 3, has a cosine of a half. And so 360 gets multiplied by a half. You get 180. And then 369 minus 180 is 189. Now, it's not a perfect square, but 9 goes into it at least, right? You can take a look at that and tell that quickly maybe. 9 goes in 21 times. We can pull a 3 out. We can leave it like root at 189 for sure, but let's go ahead and call it uh, 3 root 21. That's what x is at that instant. Now, I, I did some sleight of hand here. I, I, I introduced uh, theta in radians here when I said pi over 3. You see, because um, when we're dealing with uh, the calculus, we're dealing with um, derivatives. I mean, anytime we mention angles, they need to be um, plugged in as radians. This, this unit is quantity, and so so um, this this unit of two degrees per minute, we can't deal with that. We have to convert that. So how do you convert degrees? Sorry, that looks pretty bad. How do you convert degrees into radians? It's like a chemistry cancellation question. The way you convert degrees into radians is you got to get the units to cancel out. So you're going to multiply by it one. And it's going to be the fact that uh, pi radians, usually you don't write the word radians, but here it is, and then uh, 180 degrees, and we get our cancellation. And the two and the, the, the degrees can't, the two and the 180 can cancel, 
And so we end up with pi over 90 radians. Just two degrees every minute is the equivalent to pi over 90 radians every minute. Can't use degrees in the calculus class. We're trying to plug in an angle. The angle must be in radians. All right. So we go to this equation and we take this derivative left to right. The derivative of x squared, 2x. Derivative of 369, nothing, zero. Derivative of cosine is a negative sign. And so the negative and this negative 360 end up being um, positive 360, um, the sine of theta. But remember now, each of these guys get a d variable dt, dx dt on it, because they're changing with time. It's like a chain rule, um, d theta dt on it, because it changes with time. So our job is to um, think this. Who are our players? We have, like, if we can write a catalog, we can say uh, there's an x and there's a theta, and then there's a dx dt, and there's a d theta dt. And we are looking for dx dt. That's our mystery. We, our job is to find this exactly at the moment when x is 3 root 21, when theta is pi over 3, and when d theta dt is pi over 90. Okay with that. I'm going to plug those guys in. Now, you don't have to solve for dx dt like I've done here, but why not? Can't hurt. And so be careful, you could make some, you could, it could hurt, you could make an algebra mistake. But I just um, divided by 2x, it's pretty simple. Okay, so here we go. Into the theta become, uh, gets a pi over three plugged in. D theta dt is our pi over 90. Um, x is equal to three root 21. Put all these guys in there. Then we have our converted uh, radians. Two degrees is pi over 90 radians. So there we have it. Um, now we're talking about the sine of pi over three now. See, the cosine of pi over three was a half, but the sine of pi over three, root three over two. So you see the root three over two, the pi over 90, the 360, the two from down underneath, and the three root 21 from underneath. It's a lot at one time, without a calculator, I understand. Uh, just do your best, uh, cancel what you can. Um, let me see if I can walk you through some of this cancellation here. I don't know. The first thing I see is 360 here and 90. So I'm thinking that, you know, I'll cut that up in four pieces. And it goes into 360 four times. Um, what else? Well, then I'm staying in the numerator. I see this, this four and this two. Why can I take that out too and, and turn the four into a two? So it looks like my numerator at this current moment is two rad three pi. But I don't know why I can't take the two from the bottom and this two from the top that's left over and cancel them out. So then I have this root three pi and three root 21. Well, a little clever here. Root 21 is root three times root seven. You okay with that? And so our root threes can actually cancel. Leaving us with a, a root seven, a pi, I think, and then a... Uh, uh, root seven on the bottom. The root seven's on the bottom. The root three cancels. I guess we just have a pi in the numerator and then a three root seven in the denominator after everybody survives. I believe that's the case. Let's check here. Yeah. Good job. So we have pi over three root seven. Uh, units will be meters per minute. And that's the growth rate of the third side, as theta is growing by two degrees every minute or pi over 90 radians every minute. All right, tough question, but doable. Don't always go to law of cosines, okay? Only reason why we went here is because we knew three, well, we knew information about two sides, and we were asked something about the third side who was opposite some angle that we knew information about, and we didn't necessarily have a right triangle. Only go to law of cosines in this situation. Uh, there's law of sines too, and we can you know discuss that. But for this question, it was law of cosines because we knew two sides, and we knew the angle between those two sides, and we we're asking information about the the angle opposite. I mean, the side opposite thing. 